So section 7.2 is on sum and difference identities. Or just the sum and, sum and difference trig identities. Um, the first one is sine of u plus v equals sine u cosine v plus cosine u cosine v. Now to memorize this, you want to recognize patterns. First of all, notice on the left, it's u then v. On the right, it's u then v and u then v. So it goes u v, u v, u v, u v. Sin, the sine one here starts with the first thing being a sine. So sine u, then the cosine of the v. And then on the second term, it has the cosine first. Cosine u, sine v. Okay, so that's that pattern there. Notice there's a plus between the u and the v, and there's a plus between the two terms on the right. For the difference uh, identity, it's exactly the same, except that the middle, uh, in, in between the two terms on the right, there's a minus. So uh, between the u and the v on the left, there's a minus. Between the two terms on the right, there's a minus. Okay, so compare that with the one above. You see, that's the only difference. So these sine cosine is what we call a mixed term. It, it's a term that has one factor that's a sine and one factor that's a cosine. So uh, the sine sum and difference identities have mixed terms. The sine comes first, and it's the same sine on both sides. Okay. Now the cosine is a little different. The cosine is a non-mixed term. Non-mixed terms. So it goes again. You you start with cosine first. Again, it's a uh, uv 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 those i just always do in the same order and um the first uh term is made up of both cosines cosine u cosine v and then the second term is made up of both sines sine u sine v okay but it starts with the cosine so it starts with so you have cosine of uv starts with cosine then the minus. Obviously, it makes a difference. If you, if you did the sign first, it'd be the wrong. It'd be wrong. Um, so notice that uh, for cosine u plus v, on the right side you get a minus. Okay. Now for the difference uh, identity for cosine, cosine of u minus v, you get a plus on the right. So. The cosine, the sine on the left is opposite the sine on the right, or vice versa. The sine on the right is opposite from the sine on the left. So plus on the left gives you negative on the right, and negative on the left gives you positive on the right. And they're non-mixed terms. Okay, so cosines go together and the sines go together. So this is how you remember these things. You look for patterns. Compare and contrast. Compare is when the similarities and contrast is the differences. Okay, so non-mixed terms, cosine first, sine opposite on each side. Okay, now the tangent ones are very different. So the sum identity for tangent, tangent u plus v equals tangent u plus tangent v, the whole thing over, 1 minus tangent u times tangent v. So in short, it's the tangent of u plus v is the sum of the tangents over 1 minus the product of the tangents. Okay, and I put the u first, it goes, so on the left it's uv, on the right it's uv, uv. Um, on this one it doesn't actually matter that that's the case, but on the difference one it will because if you do it backwards, you get the wrong sign. And so notice that on top, the, there's a plus on the left side, there's a plus between the U and the V. On the top, on the right side, there's a plus. And then on the bottom, it's the opposite sign. It's negative or minus if you want. Now for the difference uh, well, tangent identity, uh, tangent of u minus v is a difference on top and then it's the opposite sign which is a plus on bottom 
So the top has the same sign in the middle as in between the U and V on the left, and the bottom has the opposite sign. So compare these two, see? The plus and minus are switched is the only difference. Okay? So sign on top, same on both sides, opposite sign on bottom. Remember, the top is the sum or difference of the two tangents, and the bottom is one, either minus or plus, the product of the two tangents, okay? So you have to have these memorized. Now, what I recommend is that you go through these, look at the patterns, and try to get to where you can write these out without looking at them. And just keep thinking about the pattern. So you write it out, then you check it without looking at it, and then you check it. If it's wrong, then you see what was wrong, uh, look at the patterns again, and then try to write it out again until you can write them out. Then go to the practice problems and look for practice problems of each type and try to do them from memory. And so what you do is you put aside your paper or what or screen or whatever it is that has these formulas on it. And then when you get to the problem, try to write out the formula without numbers plugged in. Uh, and then check it immediately to make sure it's right. And then do the problem. If it's wrong, then, you know, cover it up and try to write it out again. And, you know, just keep doing this until you've got them down where they're really simple for you. And um, rather than just doing the rote memorization, think about these pa patterns because it doesn't take that long to get these patterns down really well. Okay? Um, so, so know these. <laughs> Note, with these identities, we can find exact values, not approximations, not rounded off, but exact values for trig functions of angles that are multiples of pi over 12, or which is 15 degrees. And the way you do that, it's easy to see with degrees. You, you take 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. And 45 degree, 45, 45, 45, 90 degree triangle is one of our standard simple triangles that we can find exact values for trig functions for. And then a 30, 60, 90 is, the, is the, another one that we can find exact values for all the trig functions. And so if we use these difference formula, uh, 45 minus 35 is 15. That gives us the all the trig functions. Because we can find sine and cosine, and from there we can find all the rest um, for pi over 12 or 15 degrees. But there's other ones that you can also find. Um, let's see, pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, and 11 pi over 12. Those are the... Um, prime multiples of pi over 12 where the prime number doesn't divide 12. So there's like four of them. And uh, so it gives us a little bit more flexibility with our common triangles. We can add add this angle to the set, the, or this these four angles actually to, this, to the types of angles that we can find exact values for all of the trig functions for which is kind of unusual. Most of them we have to approximate. 